Hi, I'm Julie Jang, the conference reporter. Today we're going to talk to Donald Watts, who is a former Husky basketball player from the University of Washington. He's also the son of Seattle Supersonics, Slick Watts. Don has a new show called Game Changers for Life. So let's take a look and see what it's all about. Don Watts, thanks for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. Excited. Excited to be here. So every time that I see you and I talk to you, you tell me about a story or something that you're working on with your kids or the students, your basketball students. And I think, this guy is a great guy. He's a community guy. He's a great dad. And I want more people to learn from you. What's your show about, The Game Changers for Life? Game Changers for Life is all about uh, looking at the activities that we do and making the most of them on a day-to-day basis uh, in a way that it improves your life and, and really acknowledging that and honoring that and uh, staying involved in that process, like fully engaged and mindful. So always trying to improve. Always trying to improve and, and, and always improving, not trying, you know. And oh, just, there you go. <laughs> and just uh, recognizing those improvements because sometimes improvements, they don't look like improvements so they don't here, feel here, here, here. like improvements yes. you know sometimes they feel like oh you know you go and you get a bunch of shots up in the gym and you don't shoot as well as you did the day before so you don't feel like you're improving but those shots you're putting in the bank for tomorrow you know and it's consistent it can go up and down like a stock market if you watch it every day and you're into your results every day you can kind of feel discouraged but if you just put your head down and you work over time, there's no question that you're building yourself a better life. So it looks like you're, to me, I'm hearing you saying, looking for the long term, not the instant gratification. That's it, exactly. Yes. <laughs> what kind of topics are you gonna cover on your show? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna cover, um, you know, the dangers of youth athletics and and, and the approach. We're also gonna cover uh, on the other side of that, you know, the the benefits uh, to youth athletics. We're gonna look at professional sports and their impact on our society um, culturally and their, their benefit and what they mean, not only in today's time, but historically. We'll look at the impact of social media and how you can use it to your advantage as an aspiring athlete, as a professional athlete, but then also how it can you know, be a pitfall and how it puts a, a spotlight on not only athletes, but on everybody. You know I mean, and I think a lot of times people just to touch on the social media thing, they think that they're, you know, communicating to their friends or their audience and not really realizing that the world is watching. And the world is, unfortunately, really attracted to the mistakes that you make. Um, so you got to be careful about how you utilize those things and, and, and you know, use it in a smart fashion. Let's go back, rewind a little bit. You talked about the dangers of mm -hmm. athletics. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that, you know, it's, it's very common for people to, you know, raise money and raise funds talking about how athletics, you know, builds confidence and builds self-esteem in kids, and that it does. But it's not very popular to have the conversation on the other side, which is you have a lot of coaches who aren't really trained uh, in, in coaching. You know, they're not educators. Um, they, they can be you know, quite abusive. Uh, I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of things in our society that we are not okay with that we excuse if it's in sports. And we have to be very careful about excusing certain things when we're dealing with kids because we're modeling for kids. And just, you know, if, if I could kind of paint a picture for you, everybody has seen a coach who yells and screams on the sideline as a form of motivation for kids. But as a parent, if you were paying for your kid to go, or even going to a public school, and your math teacher, you know, act with the same behavior, you would take them out oh. of that class, like <laughs> yeah. guaranteed. Yeah. And so, I mean, one of my arguments or discussions is, is what's the difference? You know, if, mm. if, if a kid is at an age that's a developmental age, then what the coach's job is to educate. And education should look like education. It shouldn't look like, you know, education in sports shouldn't really look that much different from oh. education in the classroom when you're viewing the court as a classroom to teach life. You know, so those are some of the things that we'll be talking about. I like it. I had never thought about yeah. that. Well, that's what we're here for. Game changes for life to change the way people think. <laughs> <laughs> Already done. Look at that. Who is the audience for this? Who do you want to be listening and watching? I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, kind of 
cliche or hard to say, but really everybody. Um, uh, if you have kids, if you don't, if you if you're an athlete uh, yourself, if you're raising kids to be athletes, or if you're a corporate athlete, um, the world is is competitive. You know what? What is corporate athlete? Uh, a corporate athlete is somebody who acknowledges that they're in a competitive environment um, and really embraces the fact that they're in a competitive environment and and wants to really understand how to do better at their job uh, in a competitive environment to help their company improve, to improve the situations uh, that they're in and to, to move up the corporate ladder uh, in the appropriate way to do those things. <laughs> so in terms of... It's not that heavy, is no, it? No, <laughs> no, there's, there's just there's a lot of topics you're going to be addressing yeah. and then there's several audiences and it seems like I've, I know that you are very... Um, really important to be able to help kids and teens um, who then become our friends and adults there we go <laughs> and I appreciate that what kind of lessons do you wish to impart on them um, uh, really that the value um, is not really in winning but it's in striving to win uh, that's how we improve and, and to to get back to more long-term gratification as opposed to immediate gratification to really embrace the process the learning process uh, to wake up every day and kind of assess and evaluate where you're at, where are those, where's those weaknesses for you that you can, you know, chip away at to turn into strengths. Because uh, if we do that, not only do we make ourselves better individuals, but we make the world a better world. I was just about to bust into Michael Jackson's "Make a Better Place" no, for maybe, you and me. Maybe we can make it background music for this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we can afford the royalties on that. <laughs> so why is it important for you to influence game changers and to create these game changers? Uh, my personal experience. You know, I, I want to share my personal experience and, I, and the personal experience of a lot of others. I, I was a, a kid who grew up um, the son of a former uh, Seattle Supersonic, former NBA player, a professional player. I Slick had a, Watts? Slick Watts, In yeah. case you didn't make the connection? <laughs> um, I don't have my headband on. Oh, yeah. so I never have my head back <laughs> on. Um, no, uh, so I, I grew up in, in an environment that was highly competitive. Uh, I, I got asked questions all the time when I was playing high school basketball, and playing AAU basketball. How do I deal with the pressure of being the son of a former Sonic? And I, at the time, I really didn't understand the question. Um, and I didn't understand the question because my dad didn't pressure me in any way, shape, or oh. form. To be a great, ba I made a choice, and he helped me, and he encouraged me. Um, and then, you know, I got to the point where I was pretty good. You know, I was ranked number four on the West Coast. I was, you know, Washington State Player of the Year. Um, I was on a path that looked like it was going to head to the NBA. Um, I got a college scholarship uh, to the University of Washington. I had offers from all over the country. I chose to stay at the University of Washington. And, and then, when I was in college, I, I was I started getting sick. I was ill and I was dealing with something that, that very few people knew anything about at the time, chronic fatigue syndrome. And it led to struggle uh, at the University of Washington playing. I, I had to change some things with my diet in, in order to be successful. And ultimately, I helped our program, you know, go play for uh, a couple NCAA tournaments. We went to the Sweet 16. I had a great experience there. I got an education out of it. Um, and I had dreams well beyond what I accomplished on the basketball court, right? To, to I, like, I had dreams of being in the Hall of Fame. I wanted to be much better than my dad. So that's one reason why I didn't feel, feel pressure because my goals for myself were always bigger than really anybody's goals for me. Um, but the other reason is because he, he supported me and he encouraged me. Did he push me? Yeah, he pushed me, but he pushed me towards goals that I had set for myself. So that didn't feel like pressure. That felt like love. Um, and I think that's one thing that parents really have to, you know, make sure that it's your, it's your child's goal and check in with them to see that they still want to, to, to accomplish it. Um, but dealing with the illness, um, not being able to play a professional career, like to play, you know, overseas, you have two a day practices that didn't work with the condition I was dealing with. Um, you know, I have, letters for invitation for NBA camps. I tried out with a couple NBA teams. I would go into training camp and be one of the better players, 
you know, at camp. But then once that schedule took, I couldn't, you know, I, I got by the end of camp, I couldn't score on my grandmother if she was trying to guard me. <laughs> <laughs> so and, all of that being said, and, and not accomplishing everything I set out to set out, I still love the game of basketball and everything that has done for me and the life that has given me and the people that has brought me uh, in touch with and um, what it can do for our kids. Uh, I just have a great deal of love and passion, even though I didn't accomplish all of these lofty goals. And because of the way I approached it, now my goals, even though my dream wasn't accomplished, are even bigger than the dreams I had around basketball. You know, my goals and my dreams are, are to really impact uh, young people in this nation in a positive way, you know, in the world, really, uh, in a positive way through sports, through athletics. And, you know, we, we have a format and a system for doing that. This is one of the things we want to educate parents. We want to educate coaches. We want to educate players. Uh, we want people to learn um, from each other's experience. We'll be having guests and, and different people, but we'll be looking at the sports. We'll be looking at the activities. We'll be looking at the jobs uh, from a different angle, from a different light than your typical uh, sports or radio show or podcast where we're going to be looking at it uh, really for the tangible benefits. I love it because I don't know. I play sports, mm. but I certainly don't spectate. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but I know that I'll be able to relate. And I, I just love the way that you influence so many people. And he's always talking to kids and the youth and the teachers. And um, definitely you're making a big impact. So yay! Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. And it's Game Changers for Life. Game Changers for Life. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.